Hi, this is Kristen. And this is Aaron. And this is the Drive Mode Show. Today, we're going to talk about vehicles for people with mobility issues. So we're sticking with not serious mobility issues. So uh, if you're wheelchair bound, something like that, that's a different, that's a bigger step up than what we're talking about. We're talking about people that have uh, maybe some back issues, joint issues, uh, hip replacement, knee replacement, that sort of thing that just makes it a little harder to get in and out of a, of a car, uh, truck, SUV, etc. So just kind of a people that your mobility is a little bit limited, but it's not compromised. So you're not to the point where you need a specialized vehicle uh, for you. Right. So Kristen, we talked right before we started recording and uh, Kristen actually, I think I spent time thinking about it and I think her list came out better. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we'll start with yours. <laughs> All right. So my number one in this list for people with mobility issues is the Chrysler Pacifica. And for a number of reasons, it, it's a great vehicle in a lot of ways. You know, the minivan has a stigma, but it's great for sandwich generation people. You know, your parents can get in, your kids can get in. It's easy for everybody to get in and out. And the sliding doors makes it easy for people to get into the captain's chairs in the second row, even to the third row if they need to. It's not difficult. It's comfortable and it's just a great ride. And so in the last year, I've driven the uh, Pacifica, the Odyssey, the Sedona, and the uh, Sienna. Okay. So I've driven the four major competing minivans on the market right now. And the Pacifica by far is the easiest for the driver to get in and out of because of the design of the vehicle itself. So the vehicle is just designed so that it has a low entry point, a high door, uh, and is and the seat is just at that level where once you've adjusted it for you, once you're in the car, getting in and out from that point forward is perfect. Uh, you know, your butt just hits that point as you're climbing into the car. So, so out of all of them, it is, and I'm, I'm amazed that I didn't think about that when I made my list. See, <laughs> that's why I have her. I need well, Kristen. When I, I might not to, think uh, of this stuff. <laughs> when I talked to Marianne Capo at Chrysler, she told me about that. And we talked a lot about that because it's a great car. It's a great vehicle for grandparents, you know, because mm -hmm. they can cart their grandkids around young, older grandkids. There's plenty of room for cargo. You can take a road trip. You know, we drove it from Austin, Texas to Orlando last Christmas, and it was it was a great vehicle for a road trip. Um, I took it to Utah, just me and kids, uh, a couple of years ago, and uh, yeah, awesome for road trips. And then for the grandparents, you can buy the plug-in hybrid version, right? And then you have a uh, really, really stellar fuel economy for your everyday drive. So just driving around every day, you have awesome economy. And then the the visibility in it is really good. It's really good. It's amazingly good for the size of the vehicle. You know, you have that tunnel going down the back. That's normal in, in any vehicle that size. So when you're looking at the rear view, you have the tunnel. But it's so easy to maneuver and understand. And then the maneuvering is tight. It's very, it drives like a car. So it's just a really good setup. Yeah, and shout um, out to the Honda Odyssey because my sister's on her second one. I think she had her first one for 10 years and they bought another one exactly like it. So I, I know it's a good, that's also a good, reliable vehicle as well. See, and I wanted a Honda Odyssey because they had Judas Priest as, a, in the, as music for their commercial. That's awesome. <laughs> Not many minivans are going to make you think of Judas Priest. <laughs> Just saying. So first on my list was a Subaru Forester. I can see that. Um, there's a couple of reasons. The Forester out of all the Subarus is the easiest to get in and out of uh, because, just because of its size and shape. So it's built, you know, in this kind of square way that most crossovers are. 
uh, and then it has just the right ride height and just the right everything to make it easy to get in and out of if you're somewhere between the five and a half to six foot range. Uh, if you're a little taller than that, it f starts to feel short, but that's going to be true of any vehicle. Uh, and if you're shorter than that, so if you're, uh, you know, Simonillo sized, it doesn't matter, Hi, you're Jill. climbing in. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Jill. But uh, I also like Subaru's um, uh, Mobility Assist program, which is a from the factory program that uh, allows modifications to the vehicle for mobility reasons. So like most manufacturers, they give a thousand dollar credit towards any uh, uh, mobility upgrade on a vehicle or mobility change. But Subaru is, is rare because they do a lot of those from the factory. It's not an aftermarket thing. So little things like you can have the shifter moved from the right side where it normally would be onto the left side of the steering wheel so you can use it with the other hand which is, seems like a small thing until you think, what if you've had so shoulder surgery and it, and it takes a lot of effort to move forward and pull that, uh, or you, your right arm doesn't work at all, yep. uh, then you, have, you still have access to that. My dad um, has an artificial arm. His right arm is artificial and that would have been really great for him. Well, I love the love promise. I like what Subaru stands for in terms of their community, their commitment to the community, and their whole culture of kindness. I really appreciate that about Subaru as well. So the next car on my list is the Lexus RX. It was redone for this year, and, and I really think that it's a great car. My parents and I drove it from Austin to San Angelo to visit my in-laws at Thanksgiving, and they loved it. It was very comfortable. It's very easy for them to get in, in and out of. And my son also loved it. There's lots of room in the back seat, plenty of leg room for everybody in front and the back. We took the Lexus RX camping. <laughs> uh, but on the same token, I recommended that vehicle to friends of mine when they asked me, their parents wanted to stick with Lexus. They wanted to stick with the brand, uh, but they had a sedan and they didn't need the sedan anymore. It was, it's, it was roughly 10 years old. They gave it to their grandson and wanted to go buy a new vehicle, but they wanted something big enough that they could take their three grandkids if they go somewhere. But they wanted also for grandma uh, to be able to get in and out. And grandma wears a permanent back brace. So she wears a brace all the time. And so right. she has, her back stays completely stiff. So it's hard to bend in, which is one of the reasons they got rid of the sedan. Uh, and I recommended the RX and uh, they love the thing. So that's a, that's a great choice. Again, What's... I thought my list out, hers came out better. <laughs> <laughs> What's your next on your list though? Next on my list is a sedan, uh, but it's the largest and only truly American sedan left on the market. That's the Chrysler 300. I went with that. You could also, a lot of these points you could transpose to the, uh, the Dodge Charger, uh, which is very, very similar. Uh, same platform and body and, and interior space and everything else is roughly the same between the two. Uh, but I went with the 300 because it's a more upscale vehicle and I like the drive of that vehicle and the feel, but it has a beautiful entry and exit that's just perfectly sized that you only can get out of a truly full size sedan. So you can't get that out of a smaller sedan and you can't get the same, the same quality out of a, uh, out of a uh, not really full size. So like a, a mid size sedan that's being sold as a full size. I won't name any names, but with that big vehicle, you get that. Uh, and then you get a lot of the advantages that you could have with an SUV. You can get all wheel drive with it and a lot of other things. And it's really fuel efficient for the size. So I really like that. I think that, that as a the, choice. when you're talking about seating and the comfort of seating, I think the Nissan, um, my mother in law has an Altima. And the zero gravity seating is a great thing to have if you have mobility issues and it's easy to get in and out of that Altima, I think. Mm hmm. Um, Again, my only issue is the size. So if you go to the Altima or the Maxima, it's a, it's a smaller vehicle comparatively. 
and with the bigger size comes a bigger entry point. So the Chrysler's doors, I'd have to measure them, but I would say that they're on par with a pickup truck in terms of how wide they are. They're huge. Uh, so you get lots of space for that climbing in thing, uh, you know. <laughs> so I think it's, a, then, I, that's why I put it on my list because, and then once you're driving, it's, it's extremely comfortable. Uh, so there's just, for me, there's a lot going for that car. What's next you on yours? What? Well, just before I give you my last one, for some reason, I'm thinking about the Kia K900. Mm -hmm. See, I haven't driven that car, so I, I can't say anything about it. Same with the uh, it's Genesis. It's a big, beautiful car. Uh, going to the Genesis line, I, can't, I, I haven't driven those either. I haven't yet either, but that's my plan this year. Let's get into Genesis, and we'll review it. All right, so the last vehicle on my list is the Buick Envision. And one of the reasons I picked that, my parents are 73 and 75, and they just bought an Envision, and they love it. I drove it this summer, and it is easy to get in and out. Mm -hmm. The step up is not terribly high, and it's comfortable to drive, and it's got the safety features and the comfort features that you would expect at that price point. Mm -hmm. And another great thing that you mentioned earlier is that, you know, if the Envision is a little bit too big, you could still step it down to the Buick Enclave and, and have a slightly smaller car, but with all the same features. Right. And um, that's something that's, that's pretty unique to Buick, uh, because even going to the semi-twins, going to the siblings in the Chevy lineup, you don't have that same quality. Uh, you only get it with Bu with the Buick line. And I think it's just a difference in interior design between the two brands. Um, Buick does a different... Uh, they just design differently. And it's part of their branding. Um, it is. And most of their target market, uh, or most of their market, actually, is women. Mm -hmm. And they are designing for women and to women and by women. And it's a it's really, I think it's exciting to see what the Buick brand is doing. Mm -hmm. um, it's also nice because when you're looking at, so talking about that, Buick is aiming towards a market that doesn't necessarily want to have that feeling of climbing in and being ensconced. Uh, but with the Buick in particular, you have not just that comfort value that Buick has, but you also have that uh, lower step in with the short sill and you have the tall door because of the design of the bodywork uh, that you don't necessarily get with every other design on the market. So Agreed. Do you have any more on your list? Choice. The last one I have is a Lexus ES. Um, Ooh, Lexus yes. changed this sedan and uh, I could come up with complaints about it, but they would be so nitpicky that nobody would care and I would just get <laughs> trolled. Because honestly, it is a wonderfully made sedan. And then with the ES, you have Agreed. all the choices. So you have the hybrid, you have the regular, you have the... So you have, you have lots of choices in terms of what you want for powertrain and efficiency. But it's just perfectly sized for uh, like an empty nester. So a couple that's empty nesting. Uh, maybe you have one or two grandkids occasionally. But most of the time, it's you and maybe your friends. Um, uh, and you're going out or you're going places and then everyday driving plenty of room. The trunk is huge It's like a Jersey two-body with room for a couple of bags of lime and a short-handled shovel. It's a gigantic trunk uh, So you can really That's get a, a lot of things <laughs> in in and out of the car uh, Low sill on the trunk for loading the climb in and climb out is easy uh, if you stay away from the F, F sport model so the one caveat I put here is the F Sport changes that because it adds bigger bolstering on the seats and a few other things that make it more difficult to get in and out. Uh, but beautiful car. Okay, I can see why that's a good choice too. I think that I think we did a good job between the two of us coming up with some vehicles that are good for people who have trouble getting in and out of larger vehicles or vehicles with steps or lower vehicles because there's lots of different options for people. So I think we're done. I think we're done. Okay. This has been Kristen. And this has been Aaron. This was Drive Mode Show. It's right there, right behind me. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Talk to you soon.